Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the City of Jacksonville Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. Um, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order since we do have uh, all the members here. Can I get uh, approval for agenda? We're going to chance to look at it, review. Motion to approve agenda is presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, any approval of the minutes from September 19th meeting? I didn't see any. I wasn't here for it, so Jim, I didn't know if you recognized any errors. It looked good to me. Amanda sent an advanced copy out last week. And Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Appreciate that. Jim, thank you for doing the meeting for me. Uh, we'll go forward to the director's report uh, for new business. Okay, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. All right, I want to talk, take a minute. Susan's not with us tonight. She's got another commitment for a grant that we're applying for, which I'll tell you about. Uh, but before I do, uh, we want to remind you about Winterfest next weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Riverwalk Crossing Park. Well, and, and actually, I, I, I've already misspoke as excited as I am about Winterfest. Friday is at the Commons. Saturday is also at the Commons. And Sunday is also at the Commons. But uh, the activities as far as the snow and um, the entertainment is at Riverwalk Crossing Park on Saturday from 10 to 6. Uh, the arts and crafts is Friday night from 5 to 8 at the Commons. And then also from 10 to 6 at the Commons, and then from 12 to 5 on Sunday at the Commons. But we'd love to see you come out to all of those days. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to see Santa yet, he will be making his appearance Friday night at the Commons, but he's also going to be there Saturday at Riverwalk Crossing Park. And again, uh, we'd love to have you out there uh, in support of our event. Um, one of the neat things about it, not just for you guys, but for the public, is that we've doubled our... Uh, our slides for the event, uh, we know they're very popular where our snow is, and uh, we've doubled the amount of slides we'll have this year. So uh, hopefully uh, lines have always been long, which is good and bad, but hopefully we'll be able to cut those lines in half this year with the fact that we've added uh, some, uh, some more slides. And thanks to, obviously, our council and mayor for uh, helping fund that for us to do that for you, the public. So... Michael, I've got a question about the hours on uh, Saturday. Yes. Will the events at Riverwalk Crossing will they actually go up till six o'clock, or does it stop at the uh, tree lighting? Um, I, I believe it will stop at the tree lighting. Uh, generally, and the tree lighting is is I, I don't know that we have an official time for the tree lighting. I can't say that, and I don't have the flyer in front of me. Five thirty on the here. Yeah. And, and generally, you know, we're going to be a little flexible with that based off the sun that day. We're still in an area where Generally, by 5 o'clock, it is dark, but sometimes, I know last night, I was driving down the road at uh, uh, a little, uh, you know, 20 after 5, it still wasn't dark yet. So, we'll have to uh, gauge that a little bit, and obviously, I know we have entertainment that night, so that's a loose time. We'd like to stay right on the money, but uh, like so many things, I don't know that we're ever going to be perfect to the minute. That was a good, great question, though. And of course, also remember that at the right after the tree lighting, the Rotary Club flotilla mm -hmm. begins right there at Riverwalk Park and comes all the way up under the uh, Popkin Bridge up into the uh, basin area. Oh, yeah. One of the neat things that we're doing this year on the Saturday is we're running a shuttle from the Jacksonville Commons to Riverwalk Crossing Park. So for those of you watching on TV who sometimes like, oh, we don't have anywhere to park or any of that, you can actually drive over to the Commons, and there's going to be a shuttle all day with one of the transit buses that is just basically going to take you to and fro as the day goes by. And uh, if you don't want to drive down there or you feel like it's going to be too crowded, you can go to the Commons and uh, use our transit system. So... I will tell you, since Susan isn't here, I know she wanted me to pump Winterfest, and of course it's important to me to pump Winterfest because it is right around the corner because, as Susan likes to say, uh, November is our Winterfest month. Um, um, I apologize. I've lost my train of thought. 
but we are excited about it. Uh, one of the other things for November brings us to basketball season, and I just wanted to let you know that we have uh, – in our youth basketball league, 54 teams registered, which is basically where we've been the last couple of years. Uh, we've been practicing and are going to continue to practice through the month of December with games beginning in early January. So I wanted to bring you up to date on that. Now, where is Susan tonight? Um, hopefully I, you saw your emails. Uh, we've had an opportunity kind of fall in our lap recently for an uh, inclusive playground. There's some grant funding that was made available through NC, uh, NCR, well, through Recreation Resources, but basically through the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund, which you're familiar with because we received a grant for that for the marina. Uh, this is more of a one-time program for an inclusive play, and, and, and I say inclusive playground, and I, I've got to back up a little bit. It's for things that are uh, termed inclusive. And what we're looking at doing and what we're going to apply for is for an inclusive playground at Northeast Creek Park. Now, why Northeast Creek Park? For us, it's important at Northeast Creek Park because, one, it's in our capital. We have a playground identified in our capital improvement program uh, a couple years from now for about $325,000. And as I, I stated uh, one evening about two weeks ago to council, that's a lot of money for a playground, and it's a great playground if, if – if that's all we ever did. However, we have a great opportunity here to build a, a little more extensive playground through some grant funding that will help us maybe do even better. Now, what do I mean? It's a 25% match to the city. So right there in itself, that's pretty impressive. Uh, we're looking at a playground, and, and we've uh, I know we had sent you some, some items and things like that. Uh, basically, we ballparked that, that playground to be somewhere around $550,000. Uh, for, for the city's end, though, that's only about $112,000. So while it's a, a one-time event, it's worth the risk. We're not obligated to anything if we don't receive the grant. So the money hopefully would stay in the CIP for 2019 if we weren't able to receive the grant. But if we were... That's a great bang for our dollar, and we get a much better playground, and we are going to meet a need that currently not, that is not being met within our community right now. So a lot of positives to this. We talked to council about it uh, two weeks ago. They were very receptive to it. So, uh, you know, we sent you the information. We just had a, a public meeting, and we seem to have a good support. Uh, we've talked with our regional rep about this from Recreation Resources. They're very positive about it. So hopefully this is something that, that we'll see happen uh, uh, in our community in the next year or two. Now, uh, just to give you some timelines, we'll be submitting the grant later on this week, and the awarding of the grant is in March. So we're going to know one way or the, uh, another in March sometime, and uh, we'll go from there. But just to, you know, and I'm sure as our meetings go by and our time goes by, these are things that we'll continue to talk about moving forward. Any questions about that? I got a couple of hard sure. ones. Sure. Do we have data to support the need for it? Because the county just opened an inclusive playground over in uh, Oslo Pines, and according to Channel 12, there's an inclusive playground in Swansboro. There is. And, and this is kind of a destination park. I mean, it's not like you just wander over there. Right. So, and we do have data. You know, one of the things I failed to mention about the grant. Uh, which isn't anything in relation to the playgrounds that you're talking about, and they're great playgrounds. Well, one of the keys, one of the main keys to the grant were in inclusive for both children and military. So for as far as the data goes, um, we do have data that, that indicates in North Carolina, we have the highest percentage of wounded warriors as well as um, um, persons with disability, children with disability. So our data is very good as far as the need. The other thing you said, which was, it's kind of interesting you brought it up, was brought up during our, our um, public meeting, Onslow County, Swansboro, is a lot of these people do not have the ability to get to those communities that live in Jacksonville. Uh, one of the things that we do know, we do have a transit system in Jacksonville, and because our buses are accessible, we would be able to create a route that would drop off potential users right at the park. 
But you do make a good point in the fact that uh, that these other facilities have been built recently. That may be a negative in our grant, so putting together the data to document it is going to be important. And again, showing that our park attracts all or will be available to all age groups, adults as well as children, right. we think that is going to be <coughs> different because these other two parks are very nice parks, but they're primarily for young children. Okay. That's a great question. And yeah. you said you had two hard questions. Yeah. That was one good one. What's the second one? Oh, uh, the next one's for the dog park. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, before we get into the dog park, you know, I, I've got to do a better job at this as I move forward. I've got someone sitting right here to my left to me, and this is Scott Perosi. He's our uh, assistant park superintendent, and I failed to introduce him, and I apologize for that. But Scott's with us tonight, and uh, I think you've seen him or met him once before. But this is a good chance for him to come to our meetings and see how business is conducted with uh, with our with our advisory group. And then behind you, you see Melanie Marzette. If you've never met Melanie, she's our, uh, and Melanie, correct me if I'm wrong, our, our recreation centers. Community services community, supervisor. Yeah, I would, as I said, our community <laughs> services supervisor. Uh, so what does that mean? What does that mean for, for Melanie? She's basically in charge of our after-school program and summer program and those things like that, So, and, and does a great job with that. So whenever you hear Susan spout off these wonderful things that we're doing in our rec centers, generally we, you, uh, Melanie is, is who we can attribute those things to. So I, I wanted to make you aware of that. Um, before we get to the dog park, uh, there are a couple other things I wanted to talk about. So. If you haven't noticed, Huff Drive has been landscaped. If you haven't noticed, part of the parkway has been landscaped. If you haven't noticed, the interchange, which we call the interchange Highway 17 area, is in the process of being landscaped. Uh, we've gotten a good number of positive comments from the public about the landscaping. Uh, the great news that I can share with you and our public is that that has been funded through the department, NC Department of Transportation. So no city dollars have went into funding those, those projects there. Now we will maintain them basically starting next September, um, but that's a good thing. We have created these islands in such a way, and, and Jason Smith, who I think you've met before, our horticulturalist, worked with uh, um, an architect, a landscape architect, to, to create islands out there that are um, left and right so we'll never have to get off mowers and uh, we've created the islands in a way that they're the widths of our mowers so we're minimizing uh, and again trying to be as efficient at po as possible in all the things we do and, and we do try and be as efficient as possible minimizing the the maintenance that this has created and actually we're, we're lessening the maintenance because it is cheaper for us to maintain a landscaping island in a big picture than it is to mow those areas every week. And we like to mow and we're good at it, but in the big picture, you know, it's cheaper for us to do the landscaping and main, uh, to maintain the landscaping, and it gives a softer look to Jacksonville as we move forward. So I wanted to make you aware of that. One of the things we're working on moving forward, in addition to that, is potentially, hopefully, working uh, on some landscaping, hopefully on Western Boulevard. It's, it's, and when I say Western Boulevard, let me back up and say Western Extension. Uh, now, that's not there yet, but it's something uh, we're working on and we'll continue to work on, and we'll continue to work with DOT through uh, getting some funding from them as, as we move forward. And on that, let me just uh, add, the section of Western that we're looking at is primarily from Cracker Barrel back towards uh, parties in in that two Sam's. block zone Sam Sam's yeah. okay uh, and we hope that within the springtime that uh, council will give us sufficient money to start landscaping uh, that same theme that you've seen on Huff Drive and on on uh, Jacksonville Parkway that we'll start to introduce landscaping finally on Western Boulevard that'll make it look a lot better yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, a couple other things. Um, you will see us in the next couple of days uh, at Woodlands Park on what we refer to as the playground side. Uh, excuse me. On the school side, there's two playgrounds. There's one on the school side. There's one on what I call the Evansbrook side. You're going to see us slowly uh, start to remove the playground on the school side. 
Now, it's not the school's playground. I want to make sure we all understand that. It is the park's playground. It's kind of back in a little corner over there. You know, the obvious question is, why are we doing that? Well, we've been working with uh, JASA over the couple of uh, last, actually, for, for about a year now. And we've gotten ourselves in a position with them that uh, they're going to look at building an additional restroom facility out there uh, with a concession stand. So we went out there and spent some time with them trying to identify the best possible spot. And what we found is that is probably our best possible spot. So it doesn't encroach on the existing fields and make, you know, the spaces smaller. Uh, while the playground's important to all of us, what we realize is that's not a highly used playground, and we still do have a playground at the park. In the big picture, it's a win for the park and, and more importantly, a win for those who attend those games to have restrooms on that side. So, so oftentimes, uh, there's other alternatives that they've chosen to use. We'll make a different one available to them as we move forward. Uh, but I didn't want you, any one of you to ride by Woodlands and wonder what was going on. That's what's happening if you see our staff over there removing the existing playground. Uh, Can I ask a question? Sure. What are you going to do with it once you remove well, it? Well, that's a great question. That is a great question, and, and I would tell you that's a harder question for me to answer than what you asked earlier. <laughs> but, um, you know, one of the things that has happened since we've last seen you is um, we talked about storage space in our department, and, we, you know... <laughs> For a lot of us, as you know, you're never going to have enough, quote, storage space. And we, we had some um, challenges on how do we, where do we put some of the things that we purchased that we want to keep long term. We had looked initially, and, and I think we talked with you about this at one time, behind Wooten Park, there was the old, for some of us that have been here a while, the old um, rescue squad building there. And unfortunately, the bottom line is that building is in such bad shape that one, we can't use it, and two, to bring it up to a code where we could use it is probably cheaper to knock it down and start over. So how do we, how do, we do this moving forward? Well, we were sitting around one day and, and somebody brought up the fire station two, old fire station two on Barn Street. So we're looking at that as, as a potential, not just storage area because it has a large bay over there, but it's got large spaces over there for us to potentially, moving forward, to run some programs out of. What we've talked about, not completely decided yet, is the potential that if that, for those of you that don't know, that Northwoods uh, Elementary is a year-round school. Mm -hmm. Well, that creates a little havoc for us during the summer when we have a summer program in the rec center, and then we're trying to service an after-school program at the school. This could be a new satellite site for us to handle that sort of thing. Well, if it does become that, then that's a playground that we could repurpose for that site to utilize there. So that's, that's an idea moving forward. Uh, it doesn't mean it's in stone. It doesn't mean that we're going to do it. But it doesn't mean we're not either. It's, it says we continue to have those conversations and move forward. That's a, it could be a great opportunity, opportunity for us to repurpose an existing playground in an area that may see a, a high level of children moving forward. But we will not surplus that equipment until we have really researched our other parks to determine where we could put them. Uh, if you'll recall in Georgetown, when uh, Michael installed the new playground equipment mm -hmm. there, we took out the older playground equipment and moved it over to Wooten. Mm -hmm. So it will not be surplus. And really, if any of you all have any ideas in the parks that you all tour, that you'd like to have us uh, consider, just send a note to Michael. All right. Uh, one other thing I wanted to tell you is, uh, and uh, hopefully you've seen it, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you'll see it when you leave. Our Christmas decorations are up. Uh, I think we have 246 decorations up, which is about what we had last year. Uh, we're real happy with them, and we've got a couple that are still on the blink, that are blinking, uh, literally blinking, <laughs> some that uh, power's at the pole, but they're not working, and we're working through some of those uh, challenges as we move forward, but uh, obviously if you see something uh, maybe not right, feel free to give us a call, and, and we'll try and get it fixed as soon as possible. So, what else can we talk about? Well, we're going to talk about the dog park, but before we do... You know what? Let's talk about the dog park. Real quick. <laughs> I want to give Susan a minute. 
Uh, she, she'll probably want to talk about the splash pad with you, but I don't want to hit her with that right off the bat. So let's talk about the dog park. We, we sent you some information asking you to do some homework, <coughs> and I'm going to kind of turn it over to you for a minute, Lori, and okay. maybe you drive this conversation about where a dog park would do well. And I, I know we got a little confused about that, but it's basically it has to be in the downtown area. And, and for lack of another another area, it's got to be a, really a Sturgeon City. And we have our thoughts of where it would do, work well over there. Now I'll turn it over to you. Uh, I've had a chance to visit. I'm not sure if anybody, members have a chance. Bill, what do you... Uh... <laughs> well, as, as soon as you go in to the left, you got the swamp. So you mm -hmm. wouldn't want to put there. Then he goes further down, you've got a the cement roadway that circles and it's, it, I, I, yes, you've got to put a fence to keep the dogs in there. Any dog yeah. park that we'll put in will yeah. definitely need a fence. And I, that looks like to me it'd kind of be ideal in a way. You get, you get, you've got all this land up, but senior citizens in there, it couldn't go up. Yeah. So you got to and the little dogs couldn't make it either, probably. So, <laughs> yeah, I think about them. And then if you go far to the right or they're off to the right, you could, you've got plenty of land, and I guess you could set it up there farther away. I know you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, very, going off to the right. But that's about it. I mean, it's, it, I don't know. My question is, 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 it, is it big enough? where the you know your walkway is which is a round circle just about right. yeah. you put it right there you can't i don't think you can put it on i guess you could if you could if you wanted to buy an elevator <laughs> yeah. you know, go up there and put your little dog or a big dog and that was the first negative thing i saw over there too is walking up the hill yeah, just to get to that first spot there was no way around it but yeah. i did see several uh citizens that were walking their small dogs around the area and just randomly asking they were loving the idea of saying hey if there's a dog park anywhere to place in the city they were all about it now granted they had really small dogs so yeah. it, you know it wasn't like they had golden retrievers that right. had a lot of space to run so right exactly so that's i mean you've, you've got plenty of room if you want to go <laughs> and bear to the right if you wanted a small area it's right there for you just follow the cement walkway because it's a circular thing where you that's about all i what size I are we see. looking at well i think you know we're willing to you know what size of property are we looking at i think you know i will tell you uh, i guess i'll cheat a little I, i've identified an area out there i think bill mr ross's area is a great area um there's some things we would need to do to that area to make it more friendly uh one of the from my seat one of the drawbacks to it or challenges we have is that's an ex, that's a soupy area very it's very very wet there so yeah i, I don't you know i it, as far as the setup goes it's good but i don't know the existing soils are, are going to be right. able to support especially traffic. any yeah traffic especially if we have rain last week and, and you'll catch the way i said that um, one of the areas, you know, the primary area that I've looked at, and, and Scott and I have talked about this, and Susan and I have talked about it, and, and, uh, and a little bit, Dr. Richard and I have, is if you come into the parking lot at the park and you drive all the way down, the asphalt just stops. And then if you look out in front of you, there's a, there's a nice open field there. Right. So the plus to that is you have parking right there. The plus to that is, is you know, we are limited with some of our funding. Is there is a water fountain somewhat close? So while, you know, on one hand, if we built if we built a dog park, we would love to be able to put all the amenities the day we built it in. But I don't know that money is going to be able to to allow us to do those things. So uh, from from my seat, it meets the need. You may have to come out of the park. You may have to go another 20 feet. 20 yards, whatever it is, but there is water available there. So it's a fairly flat piece of property. I don't know that any work has to be done to it other than a fence being put up. So that's kind of an, an area, and I believe that's about two acres over there. There's, a, there's, there's close to two acres there. So that's an opportunity. I'm not saying it's the right piece of property, 
but it's out of the park, but in the park, if that makes any sense whatsoever. See, it, the, part uh, of it's grass, part of it's uh, asphalt. asphalt. There's some gravel. big building over there. So are you talking that area right over there? No, I don't think we're in the same area. So so let me back up and, and, and help you again. So let's pretend we're driving into the parking lot at Sturgeon City, not to the, uh, and let me be more uh, specific here, the parking lot to the playground. Yeah, at the end of it, there's a there's a small grassy area. Well, I don't think that's about a two-acre area. No, my backyard is bigger than that. I don't have a big backyard. Well, if you want, there's a sidewalk, you know, at the end there, and you go down, and it's like in that whole area that opens up. That's on the. It's almost like looks on the other side. It's not actually a part of the park, so it's a little bit bigger than. Yeah, is that the area that extends? Past the old lab building where Pat Donovan pots and water quality no, 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 is, or is no, no, it short of that? No, no. It's short of that. It's much short of that. Okay. It's actually, I'll tell you where, it, uh, if you come in off of Court Street and you would have uh, driven past um, the road to turn into where the playground is, and you came in through that entrance and your intentions was to maybe go down to Pat's building, it almost butts up to that. Okay? There's a nice little patch of property there. And Susan's working to see if we can bring up Google Maps to give you a better sense of it. It's a nice little piece of property. It is about two acres. Um, it's large enough where if we wanted to have an area for large and small dogs, it's large enough to do that. Um, there's not a lot of land movement to be done over there as far as we have to invent the dog park. Uh, it's it's pretty much flat land now. It's not perfectly flat, but I don't know that you want a dog park that is perfectly flat. Um, so it kind of fits uh, into what we were looking for, and it definitely fits within our budget. Now, in a big big picture, we definitely don't want to build a, a dog park where it doesn't belong. While money is important, I would also tell you that um, I think this is the right spot. So. Kevin, if you can give me the ability to draw on this screen. I don't think you can draw, but okay. you can <coughs> zoom in. Wait, wait, you can use Why don't I just point it out on the screen? Yeah, let me show you. Give you a better example right here. So you see, you see the parking lot and see how it just stops right here? Thank you. Oh, okay. See the parking lot, how it just stops right here? This whole area right here is available. Yeah, that's... It's potentially available. So... And, and just for those that didn't know, I think this is the area Mr. Ross right, is that's in right yeah. here. It's a great area. Um, not that it's a drawback, but one of the things we'd have, we would have to address the existing soils there and do something with them to make them more manageable if we're going to put uh, any type of traffic out there. I don't know that you're going to have to do that in this area. Yeah. You have an existing piece of property here that fits potentially the need of having a dog park and uh, it's a it's an opportunity now. I'm sure a lot of us have different ideas on that, and that's great. And that's why we asked you to look at it and give us your feedback. And I think that's a great area. I think this is a good area. I think mean, you know we want to hear what else you think about the park, and potentially are there other areas that maybe we're missing. No, really, I, you know, when I, when I said go out to the right, that's what I meant, that, that large area there instead of the, the sidewalk deal that, you know, there's already a circle, but for the size and, the, like you said, the soil and everything, it looks like it's it, kind of a no-brainer. Well, well and be. I want you to look at, look at the relationship, and again, I'm not a scale person, right. but if you look at that circle, and look at it over here, right. you're more than double the sure. space in reality. There's a lot of, there's a good amount of room here for us to have Jacksonville's first dog park and have it be able to serve both large and small dogs. So uh, this is an opportunity. We, we were able to get some, you know, uh, Lily uh, Gray with the city was, was uh, who you're familiar with, mm -hmm. who helped us build the splash pad at Jack Emmy Ed and the playground at Jack Emmy and all these, some of these <coughs> things I've done recently, uh, was able to procure uh, some money for some projects in the downtown area, and that's the key. It has to be in the downtown area. And we've got a small budget. 
not a big budget, a small budget, and have an opportunity here. So how do we best make this opportunity work? Let me also mention one thing. The, remember, the hill, which is the large open area, you know, that the sidewalks right. go around, uh, because that is a former landfill, you really are limited as to digging. It has a, it has a, for lack of a better term, a cover that you cannot penetrate. So if you want to take your dog out there and just let the dog run, uh, that's fine. But as far as setting that up as a dog park, you, it, it's off limits because of the restrictions that were placed on the property when we closed that landfill. Of course, you do have one other area. If you'll notice uh, the Sturgeon City uh, sign where it, where it has on that building, while well, that's not necessarily a Sturgeon City yeah. building, there is a property just to the left of the, you know, that property right there. You could also set up a, a fence area there. Where's the building going to go if it's ever built? South of that building, right? Or yes, sir. Down from the... the Mike, you, know where, you mean to come up and show I'm not where, where the cleared area is. You know, right? to leave me, though. Right where your hand is. I, well, I, I, <laughs> it's all I think it's right here, but I don't know for it's, sure. It's all of that. Yeah. The one spot that's on the top right-hand corner from where you were at, the the I guess the dirt, is that a part of it? No, no that's, 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 she talked about where the construction, right I was doing the construction, I think. Okay, so that's, that's dirt. A, a that's road road road. Road. So you would take um, small dogs, large dogs, two separate fences yeah. for both of them? You okay. would have like a gate, like a walkway, like a corridor, you would walk in, and then a gate to the small dog area, then you go down further, go to the big dog area. Okay. So then you always have an area, so if a dog got out, it wouldn't get out, it would have a gate at the front, so then it would control that. And the assumption, small dog, large dog, two, two different size fences, of course? No, I don't think no. two different mm -hmm. size fences. No? Okay. It's four foot. Something uniform. Okay. Yeah. That's a great question. I never thought of putting two different size fences in, but unfortunately, we're probably not going to man this park or put a staff member out there, and we'll have to have people treat them, you know, on the honor system, so I think it would be in our best interest, but one size fits all. Sort okay, because I noticed out. a couple of the apartment complexes, they have different size fences right. for there, so that's, I wasn't right. sure if we would have to do that or not. Well, and, the other thing to remember, uh, because we only have about $40,000 that we're able to, to direct towards the fencing, when the park is open, wherever it's built, when it's open, it will not have a lot of the activities, quote unquote, within the park. You know, the first thing we have to do is create the exterior security fence. Right. Now, over time, if we can, you know, squeeze a few dollars here or there, or if citizens want to uh, donate uh, things that they'd like to see built there, we're certainly not going to let the citizens build them there without our approval. But <coughs> uh, the interior components that a dog might enjoy, you know, such as a, um, a pipe they run through or ramps that they jump over, none of that is going to be in this first phase. Are there other locations in town that you think we should consider instead of this location? We're talking in the downtown area, though, right? Yes, it has to be in the downtown area. Yeah, we're pretty limited. limited yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, you could take one of the quadrants out of uh, Riverwalk. Riverwalk. And, yeah. Well, we did talk to the county about the property that's immediately adjacent to City Hall and behind the post office. Oh, yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, uh, that was while they they would like to cooperate uh, because of the construction of the um, health department and social services complex on college. Uh, they're going to be very limited on parking and very shortly their staff will have to start parking over in this vacant lot. And we have to actually have, have to have the money expended by the spring of 17. So if we could wait a year or so, the county was willing to let us build the dog park on the property generally behind the post office. Problem is, it won't be available to us during the time period that the grant money requires us to spend the money. Is there any room uh, around Jacksonville Landing? Would that be still no. considered yeah. downtown? No. no. I think about that retention pond. There's a fence there. Uh, at probably half an acre is all I'm envisioning over there. Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't be big enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for the first dark park that we need to set it up for success because when we want to add additional ones, I'd hate to have somebody in a position of authority go, well, you already got one and nobody uses it. Right. So 
Yeah, that's my biggest concern, that we set it up for success. Because I think well, there's a big I, I think the good news is, and, and, and no matter where we put it, we'd want it to be successful, but I think one of the things for those of us that visit Sturgeon City Park at times, it is a very dog-friendly park. There are Correct. a lot of people that take, listen, there's a lot of people that take our dogs to all of our parks, but definitely Sturgeon City fits the criteria of what we're talking about. There are people that take their dogs down there and, and take them for their walks. Uh, obviously at the Commons, obviously at Northeast Creek, some other parks that do that also, but, but we're definitely in a park, if we're down at Sturgeon City, that already is meeting and, you know, meeting somewhat of a need of a dog, uh, uh, not a dog park, but users. I also think that the, the as, as large a piece of land as you can get, you, you, you won't go wrong because right. if you try to tuck it in some small place and later you go, wow, you know, I wish we'd had more land, as much land as you can get, you right. want to get. Right. Yeah. right. I, I, I agree. So the first phase would just basically put the fences up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I've seen successful dog parks with just a fence and right. a, a watering yes. spot. Right. I don't think the dogs really care about that other stuff that much. They just no. need to get out there. Well, when you throw in a trash can and a oh, yeah. pooper yeah. 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 Somebody will put a million tennis balls out there, and that will keep them happy. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you need for us on the subject? I think that's it. I, I guess I would say to you, do you like the area that we've looked at? I mean, I think, Mr. Ross, again, I think that was a great suggestion. I just, uh, I just, uh, it's, it's just... Thank too small it is too small but i mean it's it's still i get the theory of what you were saying i think the other thing we'd really like to do is kind of separate the dog park a little bit from the park user just in case and that the one off to the side kind of does that a little bit um but still all in all great suggestion and, and that's the type of feedback we need as we move forward with you guys i think it's a great place um i go to sturgeon city uh you know to do the reports and it's always being utilized. There are people out there all the time with their dogs, with their small children. It's really family friendly. So I think when people come out there and they bring their children, they'll look forward to bringing their dogs and they can kind of sit in the middle of the kids over here right. and their dogs over here. So I think it's a good, a good spot. Great. Anyone else? Uh, that piece of property there where uh, Court Street and Loyal is, uh, yeah, is that ours? Yeah, that's a retention pond there. Yeah, the rain that's garden. a big rain guard retention That's, that's a retention pond. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, but just use rain with that, yeah. Duck pond. These are for diving <laughs> dogs. There you go. Oh, we are? Can we get Can, are you throwing it back to me? Splash pad? Yeah. Did you guys do any of it? I know. I was, no, I was getting time. ready to do yes. it, and you walked in, so we jumped perfect to the dog time. park because I figured you He was procrastinating. Yeah. He was, <laughs> mine, and yes. he was like, oh, splash pad. Oh. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. So um, I gave this report to council at an updated um, at a workshop, but this basically kind of, I mentioned, I think, last time some of the numbers, and we were kind of closing out the season. So this is where we're at. Um, this is some of the operating um, and the details that we looked at for the summer. We opened on Memorial Day weekend, which was the 28th. I would like to, if Melanie hasn't been introduced, Melanie Marzette back here. She was one of our two CPOs that we did have certified and headed up. So it was a big learning curve for her and for Nick Broninger, but they did an excellent job with um, really keeping the levels where they needed to be, operations and all that good stuff. So. These, um, there's some hours you'll see in a minute, and that uh, includes hers, but these are all of our operating hours, and we were clo we closed on uh, the day after Labor Day weekend. So we operated 101 days, and that was just for those every day from the time Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend. Um, we did have quite a bit of learning curves. Uh, chemicals, I don't know that we understood as much as we could have, and I don't think we could have even if you know, I just don't know that we could have ever realized it, um, which is not a bad thing. It's just a learning curve because we've not been in the aquatics business before. But we learned and we've um, we've learned from everything we've done. Uh, one of the things we've already fixed, which is um, going to hopefully really show some additional improvements for next summer, is we did have a drainage issue. 
if you went out there with the number of people and the number and the amount of water, it was it was an issue on the perimeter of the splash pad. It it made for a little bit of a mess. We had to cone it off, fence it off, just to try and give that mud a chance not to stay so muddy. But we have actually since gone in there. The contractor came back. They d dug a trench and put some more drainage on the perimeter and added another row of bricks. So we've expanded the perimeter and we've added drainage all around the whole thing. So um, hopefully next summer it won't be a mess around there, which unfortunately what occurred was is with the additional mud and water and grass, it just increased, uh, you know, Melanie and Nick's load because it, it got into the drain, it got into the filters, it got into, you know, all of those sort of things. So we think that what we've done so far will really show some improvement on multiple levels uh, for next summer. So, uh, again, you can see there we uh, we had only one day that we had to shut down. It was unfortunately on the 4th of July weekend, but it was the activation button really just was not working, and they overnighted one to us from Canada. They're based out of Canada, um, and we were able to get it installed and back up and running, but for the most part, we um, we operated. Um, uh, there are some other issues. Scott did a great job with laying the uh, uh, pavers and the patio out front. We added additional tables and picnic tables because it proved to be so popular, but these are all great things. That I have to say between uh, uh, parks and the facility maintenance and the engineering department, it was a great group of people. It was all hands on deck. I think we all realized the value of what that splash pad provides for the citizens. And we worked really hard to keep it as, as functional and as positive as can be. So we worked, um, you know, and everybody pitched in where they needed to, no matter what department you came from, everybody was hands on. Um, so it was, a, it was a great team effort from city employees. Uh, here's some operating cost. Uh, it was it was it was really interesting to try and track chlorine. This was a liquid chlorine. That's our total amount we spent for the su for the summer. Again, another learning curve. We uh, had to have it brought to us, so we had to work out logistics. But it worked out really well. Nice company to, to, that did that. Electricity. That's the amount we spent on water, considering it's a splash pad and it's nothing but water. But because it's a recirculating system, and we have to, we have the same amount, basically the same water you're recirculating. That was um, that was our bill for for the water. Uh, you'll see here we have staff expenses. Operating is what I would consider Melanie and Nick and part-time staff that we staffed out on weekends. And then the FMS, this is, these are the guys, Alan Baker and, and his team, that really when something went wrong or a pump wasn't quite functioning the way it should, uh, he really spent some time and we worked through some issues. I don't anticipate this same number for next summer. I really see it going down. We just, we, we wanted to make sure we understood every component when it came to an issue. So we were all there trying to figure things out and troubleshoot. So. This worked out, uh, it worked out well. I think we have a really good, really good education on the system and the computers and the pumps and the filters and the, all that good stuff. So I don't anticipate this, the same amount next year. So it, that number should go down just because of, yeah, we're better at what we do this year. <laughs> Aren't we, Melanie? <laughs> um, interestingly enough, we realized quickly into the summer that we got feedback that ice cream would be nice, so we put an RFP out there, and Rita's Italian Ice won it, and the revenue that they got out, out of actually only being out there for maybe six weeks, they didn't start off the summer Memorial Day weekend, they started probably four or five weeks into the summer. They, at least, we made enough to recover the cost of chlorine. <laughs> With about, you know, ten dollars into the goods, so... Uh, we anticipate somebody else or anybody for that matter, they were great to work with, but they'll have a contract for the whole summer next summer, and so we'll, we'll go from there. But they were popular on those hot summer days. Can't go wrong with ice cream and, and water. Uh, obviously, I think you guys are all aware that we had some great positive feedback. Uh, it, it really, everybody was just so gracious with um, with everything we did out there. It, there we didn't, I don't think got any negative feedback. Every, I think everybody just truly, truly enjoys the amenity and, and, and the splash pad. So um, hopefully you guys can read all of that, but we just had some really great feedback. And that's pretty much it. I, you know, I, I appreciate everybody's support. You guys have been there from the beginning, from uh, concept designs to uh, all the updates and getting it in to hearing about it during the summer. And then that's our recap. So 
we look forward to making additional improvements and then having another great summer next summer and seeing what the future may hold as far as any future ones. Any questions? Any numbers jump out at you? Uh, just a, any extension? Talk about the extending maybe the days earlier and later? The days? You know, honestly, we kind of keep with the school schedule. Okay. Um, we could, uh, but what we found is, is even that week after the kids went back to school, because they went back on August 25th to Labor Day, it just, you know, it didn't operate. You know, there were very few people out there. There was a, a handful. We certainly could. It's traditional. For most aquatic facilities across the nation, they operate kind of that Memorial Day to Labor Day. If we extend it, we could possibly extend it a couple of weeks. It's just this this wasn't ready until Memorial right. Day. I think you all, you all were there the week before we um, doing the opening ceremonies. But were there we'll any, any inquiries it. about rain out for birthdays? Yes. yes, we actually in, in our office we had that, and I know Susan did too. Had lots uh, of we that. discussed that, and we said that we were not going to do that, and here's the reason why: uh, the facility was primarily funded with community development block grant. Right. Uh, the purpose of that obviously is to serve low and moderate income persons, and we decided that it was not a good idea to say that that only during certain hours could you be there. Right. So it's best just to have it free. Uh, if we build a second or third or fourth one at some time, maybe we will consider renting it out. But uh, from a management standpoint, we just said, no, it, it's not a good idea. It needs to be open to all, especially given the funding source for it. Right. I respect that. Uh, any other questions? I know at times I've gone out there, it was a huge, like Susan said, n never a negative. I had more mothers come up to me and go, well, what about a book exchange? If we put a mailbox out here so we can exchange books or... Or one other thing, you know, picnic tables, which I brought up in another meeting. I don't know if anybody else had an opportunity to stop by there and see the kids running around. Oh, yeah. My granddaughter's giving two thumbs up. We were out there many times. We okay. also had uh, Jackie and me that opened on Saturdays. The rec center, right? Yeah. So that, you know, when you go inside and play with your child or whatever, you were able to do that, too. So that's one thing that we were definitely going to keep doing come next summer. You know, this was our first time right. out. And we did learn a lot from it. Um, it was hot. That's what I remember the most. <laughs> but uh, we, we got a lot from it. So next next year, um, we could we could have it open. Uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday for the weekend crew. We'll get you one of them fancy orange hats. <laughs> you know, from a financial standpoint, if you think about uh, roughly twelve thousand dollars and a hundred days, that means you the cost is one hundred and twenty dollars a day, and to offer that to as many people as took took wow. part on it every day for one hundred and twenty dollars a day, and that's just operating. It's not the capital cost because we all know you know it costs like a quarter of a million dollars to build. But once it's there, uh, the operating cost is very reasonable uh, given the participation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that between the splash pad and redoing the ballpark and what we've done at the rec center, we really have done a fantastic job taking an older rec center and, and well, one of our first, well, it was our first rec center. Yeah. It and it's now, it still you know, is. It's now a crown jewel. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But, you know, uh, Mr. Spring, you make the point. The, the mayor and council have said that they want us to touch things once and do it right. We have now almost completely finished the master plan for Jack M. Yet. Between the building improvements, the gymnasium improvements with the new floor, the playground improvements, tearing down the old houses and putting in new outdoor basketball courts, the baseball field which is second to none and I still haven't hit a home run out of there <laughs> but and now the splash pad and the parking lot uh, the last couple of things we need to do is work on the overall uh, walking trail and then to see if we can improve some shade around the splash pad and possibly some uh, additional restrooms that are outside the building but the uh, council has invested almost a million point seven in the last six years in that facility. It shows, though. It shows. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah, gorgeous. Right. Anything else on the director's report? Let me mention two things that are not necessarily on the director's report. 
Uh, number one is we would not like to have you mark your calendar for January the 3rd. That's a Tuesday night, first Tuesday in January. And that's going to be the annual joint session between the mayor and council and all of the advisory groups. Be across the street again in the uh, youth center beginning about 515. We have no council meeting that night. And so, you know, we hope to have about two, two and a half hours of lively discussion. What we want you, uh, when you come that night, we will be given a task of, of thinking out of the box about where we move the community. Now, two years ago, y'all gave us 59 ideas. Those were about things we needed to be working on now. We are going to be giving you a topic. Uh, we won't tell you tonight because knowing y'all will go home and you know write them all out. It's best sometimes to have spontaneous thought. But we think that the, uh, that the program is going to be one that you will enjoy and, more importantly, will be very beneficial to the city for the next five years or so. The next thing I would like to update you on, which I'm sure Susan has, has talked to you about, and that is the marina. As you know, we did get the PARDAP grant of $350,000. We had to match that with roughly 450000 The council has the money budgeted. We're in the process now of going out for an RFP for actual engineering to design it, and we hope that by the springtime we're going to have uh, bids out to start uh, removing the current facility and over the summer installing the new facility. That will be, of course, down at the marina uh, there at the end of, uh, of Kerr Street. Questions you may have for the management of the city? Amphitheater? It's coming along fabulously. Well, let me tell you a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had thought to send you the picture. It was a good picture. But this past Thursday, uh, one of our inspectors was out at the amphitheater doing some inspecting, and he realized that the first concert was going on at the amphitheater. And as you know, it has layers mm -hmm. for seating. And on the top layer, there were over 100 uh, spectators that had flown in from Canada. They literally had flocked to the event and they all had bird's eye views of the stage. And guess what? They were all Canadian geese. But if you could have seen the picture, it was as if there was a performance going on in the stage. They were all focused right down towards the, uh, towards the performance area. It was really comical. I'll see if we can find that in the archives. It was a good picture. It was, pretty, it, was pretty com it was pretty comical. It was really interesting. But I'll, give, uh, I'll hand it over to Michael. I'll just say that it's coming along. We had such a long stretch of, and then now it's really come together. The grass is filled in. They've worked really hard. You, you, Michael, you can give, or Scott, you can give the update, either one. Well, I think the biggest thing right now is if you haven't had the opportunity to go over there, and I'm sorry, I was trying to find the, the picture that Dr. Woodruff was talking about to see if we could get it up. But um, uh, the amphitheater, if you haven't noticed, we've, we've laid some sod over there in the actual seating area. If you haven't noticed that, we've done that. We did that about a month ago. It's starting to take hold, so it's doing what we had hoped it would do. Uh, we met, Scott and I met, with the uh, engineers from Parker and Associates two weeks ago, and we talked about what we would consider punch list items, things like basically cleaning up the site, which we've noticed that they've not completely done, but have come close to doing those sorts of things. Uh, Scott himself, I, you've seen some of the paperwork at Jack Amiette, uh by the splash pad. You've noticed, hopefully, some of the paperwork you see out here on the landscape lot islands where we've built uh, basically planters. You saw the wall over at Jack Amiette, and you've seen the fountain over at the depot, and those are things that Scott has all been very involved in, and, and moving forward, one of the things we'd like to do is build a wall at the amphitheater on uh, and we want to build one to see how it looks and to see how it finishes out uh, basically on the back seating area uh, something that you potentially could sit on now when we talk about a wall we're talking maybe two three blocks high we're not talking about a five foot high wall we're talking about two to three foot high wall uh, basically to give it a finishing touch luckily for us we have someone on our staff like Scott who has that kind of a talent that can do those sorts of things. It's evident in some of the work we've seen. 
so it's a it's a chance for us, you know, being honest with you, to take the the amphitheater to another step, another level. Uh, and obviously, for us to be able to do it, there's a plus to everybody involved in doing those sort of, sort of things. And uh, so we're really excited about that. In a much broader picture, uh, Susan and I will be sitting down with engineering in the next couple of days and talking about where do we go from here. We need to pour concrete for a stage. We need to bring uh, some sort of accessibility into the actual amphitheater. You know, win, win, win. Are we doing these things? We need to start getting some timelines. There's landscaping still that needs to be done. Of course, there would be if I'm talking to you. There's, <laughs> you know, those things need to be done. There's some other neat amenities we're going to put out there. Those things need to be done. And, and I think for Marcy, what's most important to us right now is what we don't want to do is step all over each other. As we move forward, we need to kind of tie this together, sit down, and come up with a timeline for all of us to get these things done, but do it in a way that we're not in each other's way when we're trying to do it. Are creating more havoc out there. So that's where we're at with the amphitheater. To make a long story short, though, I would hope by the spring, uh, although we've already had somewhat of a concert out there, I would hope by the spring uh, or, or thereafter, close thereafter, we would be able to have the, the, the amphitheater in some sort of working condition to our public. Any questions on that? All right. Um, Dr. Richard, since our council liaison's not here, do you have anything to add that you already have? I think other than what I've said. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Spring? Uh, at our last meeting, we discussed, uh, we actually approved the, uh, the same site plan and that we had for Sturgeon City. We approved it again. So the original one ran out. Correct. And so what we basically did, it was one of our shorter meetings. <laughs> and uh, so we approved the new one. So I'm sure city council is probably going to look at that again. Yes, sir. That was it. All right. Moving on to our parks report, uh, Mr. Ross with Wooten. Everything looked good. The uh, men's bathroom, the light didn't come on. Uh, you think that's because it's the men's room? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it just didn't come on. But... Uh, Park is very neat. A uh, couple of folks were playing basketball. Uh, really well kept. Equipment still new. Looks like still new. So it's in good shape. Okay. Uh, with my parks, Richard Ray and the Commons area both um, looked great. There were some folks running around there this past weekend. Uh, Jack and Miet, I did notice the same thing. I mean, I love that park. It is so pretty. Basketball net. Uh, if you're looking at the park, the one all the way closest to the housing may need some changed out, if not here soon. Okay. Thank you. Let's see, Mr. Spring? Uh, Phillips Park looked uh, fine. I saw there were quite a few people out there today when I was out there. Um, however, the, the sign on the sh front of the shelter is missing about four or five of the letters. Uh, other than that, everything else great at Phillips Park. At Sherwood, uh, I noticed that at first, I thought it was rust, but it turns out that the, um, the playground the playground equipment has some, looks like some rubber that's been bonded to the metal, and near the steps on your way up, you'll see a place where the the bondings come apart, and it looks like a little I don't know a little like a little pocket like you know, it's stuff. the weather where it cracks after yeah. fifteen or whatever many years. Yeah, yeah that's that's there's and, no way to stop it as far as that's concerned. It's just weathering. Um, We've been looking and trying to maybe cut them off, cut that stuff off, and then try to resurface it a little bit. But I've, I've been talking to some playground equipment people about trying to find the right stuff to put on that for that. Yeah, because getting it off would be one thing, but what would you do to keep the rust from coming right, back? Right, right. I mean, that's the issue when we're yeah. talking about all And then uh, in Branchwood, uh, they were actually, <laughs> I, I, I noticed, just like you had mentioned, that we do use some of these parks as, quote, dog parks. And that's what Branchwood was being used at when I went down there. But um, there's a picnic table in the back that's got quite a bit of writing, but none of it looked dirty to artistic artwork uh, It might need to be painted sometime in the future. And some of the, some of the boards on the bridge 
uh, um, are cracking on the edge. So yeah, what? Well, that's one thing we've been looking at. I don't know if you've been, we went to Richard Ray, but we replaced all the boards right. on that bridge so far. And the bridge over at the commons from the ball fields to the shelter to the ball fields replaced all those so far. And we're, that's a process we're going to be doing over the next year or so is trying to replace the boards on most of the bridges. But the Richard Ray replaced every single board. We restarted up the bottom, was rotting out a little bit, so we fixed that. And so it's pretty much a brand new bridge now. But uh, all the parts were clean. Steve? Uh, the downtown parks, uh, Cursory, Riverwalk, Bullingham, look fine. Uh, I actually saw somebody playing on the playground again, which that's the second time. So I guess it's, you have to go in the evening. That's the, I think it was the safe people, too, but I was happy with that. Uh, Northeast Creek, lots of activity. I go over there all the time. My, my dog takes me over there. Uh, <laughs> so if the weather is decent, there are tons of people at the playground all the time, and the Frisbee golf guys are there all the time. I don't care what the weather is. They're always there. And uh, the boat ramp gets quite a bit of use now. Well, it always has, but I guess fishing is not season now, so they're going out like crazy. Uh, the lagoons, the, uh, the terror cross guys kind of left them in a mess. Uh, We're taking care of that. Yeah. yeah, okay. I say, it wasn't ever a putting green, but now it's a giant mud puddle and there's a uh, about two dozen gigantic tires there that they left mm -hmm. which you're going to need a forklift and a flatbed truck to get rid of those things and the uh, and the, the bollards are, are out so they got to go back in right. yeah although if you watched it on tv uh they made the park and the town look really nice yeah. it, not like it isn't i mean but they projected a really good you know yeah, yeah. It made for good tv <coughs> It was uh, the female races were on last night, and uh, two of them fell over into a mud puddle, which was hilarious. Because they were, they showed, they have uh, GoPros or something inside the, the cab. So they showed this, this girl's laying there, and you know, the mud's up to about here. And they, they pushed it back over, and she got out, and she was covered in mud. But she gave thumbs up, she thought it was a good time. All right, Jim. Well, let's see, Brook Valley. I went by there a couple of times over Thanksgiving. It was being used both both times. And just a comment, the trash can by the bridge. Uh -huh. uh, I think we lost the lid at some point in time to that. So it's been replaced with a 10-ton lid. There's no way anybody's going to walk off with that one. I can barely move it off to put trash inside. And the uh, water fountain, uh, the plumbing that comes up through the uh, masonry stuff, uh -huh was loose at one time. I think somebody went in the pox did it. Well, right. it's come loose again. I think that's going to be a losing battle. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I, we just did it not too long ago. So I think kids might be playing with it, trying to pull it out sometimes because yeah. it's epoxy. I don't know, but we're going to have to maybe replace the whole fountain at some point. And yeah, the Northwoods, I went by there on the way here this evening. Uh, it was being well utilized. The only problem is she mentioned there's a, a, a Duke Power or CPNL, whatever they're called these days, pole out with two big spotlights, but there's also two lights outside the uh, front door, like porch lights, that aren't working. So okay. I don't know if they're burned out or there's an electrical problem or, or we'll what. We'll take care of it. Thank you. And then uh, Mill Creek Green, I know that's not reported on, but I was down there about 10 days ago, and a lady was down due to the area and had her dogs running loose. Well, first of all, that would be a good dog dog park, but I also told her about the alligator incident two years ago. She said, well, I'm glad you told me. Uh, it was in the middle of the day, so, you know, alligators usually want to feed in the middle of the day, but I said, you know, if you're down here at dusk or dawn, you might want to keep your dogs a little bit back from the water. She said, well, thank you very much. All right, Miss Benita? Um, went down to Georgetown. I think people really know when I'm coming because no one's ever there when I go. <laughs> <laughs> it's really lonely. Um, but everything looked nice. Um, Sturgeon City is always booming with people. It's a lot of activity. People are always there when I go out, um, just having a good time with their kids and their dogs and things like that. So, All right. Oh, but at Sturgeon City, the water fountain, the water is still pooling. It's just like stuck in the water fountain. Jump on it, Mike. We're going to jump on it. We're going to have to buy the water fountain. Yeah, we clean out sand. I guess the kids put sand in the drain. So we clean it out in its own place, and every time yeah. it just gets out, we just have to clear it out. So. 
All right. We'll put it back there. Before, was anybody else, any else things yes. discussed? Yes, ma'am. I was just told, I didn't see it, but he said over the hill to the back area of Sturgeon City Park, there's a broken bench. So I might want to check that out. That was behind, like where the amphitheater, like the concrete is? Yeah, when it goes, when it walks around. You go over the hill. Where the circle is? Where yes. You know I took them all out. Oh, okay. The other day. I okay, in that case, on, so, on because it was about a week ago. Yeah, Wednesday so, okay, or so Tuesday, we're out there. We cleaned them unsafe. I took them all out. So, yes. But, but we got them. We got them all out of there. Good. Before we adjourn, I'd want to welcome our new member, Joseph. Um, Joseph, if you could uh, give us a little snapshot of you. and. Okay. Uh, Joe Speranza. I've been here for about 10 years in the local area. I'm still active duty Navy for about another eight more months until I hit my retirement, 26 years, and uh, retiring here in the community and happy to finally be involved. Okay, good. And we'll take a look at the parks and have a couple for you here in the next couple of days. Sure. You take a look at. Uh, on behalf of me, the board, thank you for your service. That's kudos to what you've done for our country. Um, any other things to add? Anybody? Alibi. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I responded to everybody uh, on the, the trail extension. Mm -hmm. And my son-in-law, we rode that over the Thanksgiving weekend. It really looks great. The bridges and the, uh, the raised elevation is all in. It looks like there's maybe a half mile plus mm -hmm. of trail that needs to be put in. Is there an update on when that's going to be uh, finished? Yes. And I'm... <coughs> Either one of us can give it, but um, I walked it week before last, walked the entire length, and so I did get an update. Uh, they are working right now on the section here closest to City Hall, and then they're working their way, and that'll be the last point that they finish is that stretch that is not complete because that's actually where all of the construction vehicles go in. So they're working basically from the outside in so that they finish. It's kind of like vacuuming your house. You vacuum from the farthest point out and walk your way out the back door. So yeah, out the you door. Do so that. I do actually, because I don't want to see my footprints, you know, how, how that goes. So that's kind of the process. And so I think the plan is we're in November, December, I think early spring, everything should be absolutely complete. But the bridge work and the raised uh, elevation nice. of path look really nice. Did it? Was that about right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, okay. Down I didn't understand the part about the vacuuming, but as far as the project goes, this is right. to that. There's still about a two-foot drop at the end of the bridge, which they're going to fill in. But I had to. My son-in-law, we warned each other. Dad, slow down. Got to dismount and walk over this one. Yeah. But it's a nice path. It's going to be very nice. All right. Before adjournment, uh, Winterfest is coming up weekend. See you folks out there. Yes, please. Uh, can I get a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's break out. Make a good move.